Stamping friends, welcome. Today is Tuesday, October the 31st of 2023, so happy Halloween. This is also the last day for the best deal in the Stampin' Up! catalog, and that is the starter kit promotion this month. And I will tell you a little bit more about that when we turn the camera down. If this is your first time here, welcome and welcome to all of you returning. I am Terry Hartley at Rustic Barn Cards, an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Iowa. Before I turn the camera down, I want to talk to you about my Rustic Barn Card Club. Now, the Rustic Barn Card Club is a subscription. It's a monthly subscription. And um, this month, we are making six projects, and two of them are fun folds. So you'll be making four fun fold projects. And I have three designs, so you'll be making two of each of the three designs. So we have this cute little gingerbread and just kind of a sneak little peek. And again, we'll be making six projects. And I'm going to be using the Sending Cheers bundle. So if you don't have that bundle, you can add that on. You will also receive... Um, 20 to 23 dollars worth of product along with the the cardstock the pre-cut cardstock to make these projects and um, there is a link in the description the deadline to sign up for my november this is my november rustic barn card club my deadline to sign up is november 10th and then this will ship out to you uh, by the 21st of November. So, um, again, just wanted to share that with you. All right, let me turn the camera down and let's start stamping. Just wanted to remind everyone that today, October 31st, is the last day of 2023 is the last day to take advantage of the promotion that's going on to be part of Stampin' Up! So option one is that you can choose 35% off the normal cost of the starter kit. And if you choose this option, you pay $64.35, but you can choose $125 worth of product, anything that you want from the many, the annual online exclusives, and you receive free shipping. And you also receive a paper pumpkin and a registration for a online event that's coming up in November. Or you can choose 35% more product with your starter kit. You would pay $99, but you would choose $168.75 and free shipping plus the online event and a paper pumpkin. And then you can try, try out Stampin' Up! You'll receive a discount and um, you, you will be able to receive your discount 20% off through the end of March of 2024. And then you can decide if you would like to um, meet the quota that we do have in place or uh, decide not to go ahead. So reach out to me and I would love to talk to you about being part of the Rustic Barn Stampers and part of Stampin' Up! It's also not too late to sign up for my newsletter if you're not signed up to receive the 12 weeks of Christmas. I've teamed up with two other demonstrators, Connie from Gray Stamping with Connie who lives in Canada and Sarah Bullen from Handmade After Dark who lives in Australia. And we are alternating each week and we'll send you a newsletter uh, with a free video and a PDF tutorial. And although we started this the week of September 25th, you can sign up now for this week's newsletter and we will give you the links for all the ones that you've missed. So in the description, you will find the link to sign up for my newsletter and you will receive uh, each week uh, from one of us.
All right, let's go ahead and make our project today. And we're going to be making a 3D box. Um, it will hold a Kit Kat candy bar, but you could also uh, use this for other items too. So I'm going to start out with a uh, the cardstock, and this is cut at seven and three quarters by seven and a half, and I'm using Balmy Blue. So again, uh, seven and three quarters by seven and a half, and we're going to uh, I'm going to bring in my trimmer. You can most certainly uh, use your scoreboard, but actually this is a little bit easier for me to get on camera with my trimmer. And I'm going to be using uh, the Season of Chic stamp set for our project today. So you want to make sure the 7 and 3 fourths, the long side, is at the top when you start scoring. So we're going to start uh, scoring with a long across the top. And we're going to score at three inches. And then three and five eighths. And then six and five eighths. And then seven and a fourth. So again, we scored at three, three and five eighths, six and five eighths, and seven and a fourth. And then we're going to turn so the short side that is across the top. That would be the seven and uh, one fourth. And then we're going to score at two and a fourth. Then we're going to score at two and seven eighths. And then six and seven eighths. And now you'll need your bone folder and then we're going to fold on the score lines. So I'm going to go ahead and Bring my bone folder in and we will just fold in all of the score lines. And you can use your hands first and then but make sure you go over with your bone folder. Especially when you're making a box, you want the lines to be nice and crisp. And it helps define your score lines and helps you make your box. Okay. And I have one more. All right, now make sure, yep. I'm going to turn it this way. So, I have a small score line at the bottom, and then I have these two right here on the right-hand side. And then we are going to go ahead and do a little bit of trimming. So, we're going to cut this little square at the bottom. Just going to cut that out. And then we're going to cut this section and this section out. So these two sections right here. Maybe if I turn it over, there we go. Okay, like this. And then down here at the bottom, I'm going to turn this over and we're going to notch right here. And 
just going to take a little sliver off of each side. It's going to be the bottom. Okay. All right, so this we will be adding adhesive like this. So what I'm going to do now is that I am going to turn this this way so that tab we're going to glue is over here, but I'm still going to trim. So I am going to trim, going to trim straight up on this. To that second score line. Then I'm going to just flip it up out of the way and then you have a top score line here and then a bottom score line. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to start on that bottom score line, the one closest to me, and I'm going to just cut that straight across. So I'm going to cut right here. going to turn it over I can maybe see better there we go all right so your box should look just like this right now and then we are going to put little notches here Gonna cut up there and put a little notch. And then right here. All right. So there we go. Should look just like this. Then we have one more piece to trim off. We do not need this section right here. So we do need these tabs. So let me just fold these tabs up to get them out of the way. And then we're going to cut this little piece off right here. So now... We have this long piece here. We got two tabs and two tabs here. And then we have these two that fold over. So this is how it should look. So now I'm going to turn it. I probably need to this little piece here. I'm just gonna take a sliver off of that so it looks like this. Okay, so now I'm going to turn and we are going to going to bring in my silicone mat and we are going to add some adhesive. Let me grab my stamp and seal. You could use tear and tape. But I'm going to put some stamp and seal there. And then this tab right here, I'm going to add some adhesive. So I have adhesive at the top, and then I am going to fold this in, and I'm going to bring this side in. Got to make sure that I have that. Okay. And I want to line it up. This way I think I can there we go you can see maybe you can see better so when I get that seam level there you can even take your bone folder then I have sticky here and sticky here so I'm going to fold this in and then I'm going to fold this flap 
See, this is going to be my front here. So I want to fold this flap in first. And then I'm going to add some more adhesive. You know, I think tear and tape right here might be just a little bit because there's not a lot of room. So let me grab some tear and tape. All right. bone folder to make sure I get a good it adheres well and I'll use my take your pick tool to take off the backing there we go all right we already have sticky on the tabs So here we have our box and it has a lid. Now let's do some decoration. So let me lay that aside. And we're going to be using the designer series paper and this is a walk in the forest. Yes, a walk in the forest. And what I love about this is that Stampin' Up! is giving, they are donating $3 for every pack that is sold. Um, we're going to use the snowflakes and the back of it has the trees. Uh, this is my last my last piece. I've already cut the uh, pieces that we need. But you have trees. You have some bears. Pine cones. Some berries and greenery. So really pretty uh, design series paper. I'm going to need a scrap of basic white. You want to use a circle punch. I use the two and three eighths circle punch in basic white. And I already have my designer series paper uh, cut and we're going to bring in the snowflake from the season of chic and we are going to use a sure afternoon ink so we're going to do some stamping and I just said that a sure afternoon and i'm going to stamp three snowflakes Then I'm going to bring in, this is the snowflake die from the chic dies. And you have uh, dies that will cut out all the images from the season of chic, plus you have some extra. And this is in the annual catalog. And then I use the two and three eighths circle punch for my for my circle. Okay, I've already die cut these out. So we have these three here. And then I'm going to be using some ribbon. So I'm going to bring that in. This is the beautiful uh, sheer with silver ribbon that's in our mini catalog. And I'm going to lay that aside. And we're going to go ahead and add a designer series paper to our box. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and adhere this at the front of our box. Then 
the measurements are in the description but this is let me look at my notes this is two and three fourths by three and three fourths and then on the back or I t this is two and three that's right two and three fourths by three and three fourths and this goes on the back And the back is uh, two and three fourths by three and seven eighths. But you could actually cut two of these, two and three fourths by three and seven eighths. Just cut them twice, and you just go up a little bit higher. So uh, just cut two of the same would be fine. Now this piece right here, the front flap, that's going to go right here, and I think I'm getting my measurements wrong. This is two and three-fourths by three and seven-eighths. So this is two and three-fourths by three and seven-eighths. This flap here and this, or this designer series paper here and the, for the front and the back, that is, so this is two and three-fourths by two. So this is two and three-fourths by two and I'm going to give you this correct now. The front and the back flaps are two and three fourths by three and seven eighths. Goodness, couldn't even read my own notes. But again, they will be in the description. And I apologize. I'm going to lay that this way. Now you can decorate your box just any way you want. I think this would be a really cute idea. Um, you could have this at your, um, like a little favor at the dinner table, like for um, a holiday. So you could decorate it for Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm decorating mine for Christmas, but you could, um, you know, do whatever you would like. So I'm gonna add this right here at the top. And this is a half of an inch by two and seven eighths. The designer series paper. I'm just going to hold that for a few seconds. Then I have two strips that are the same for the sides, and they are a half by three and three fourths. I like using the cardstock for this box because it gives a nice uh, feel. It gives it, it makes the box, the treat box, sturdy. I just need to hold it just a little bit. Okay, so see how it's coming together. Still, gonna, we're going to decorate it a little bit. Here's a Kit Kat. That fits right in there with this flap right here. Of course, you wouldn't have to put a Kit Kat. You could put um, a gift card. You could put money. You could just put anything in there that you would like. I'm going to take this sheer ribbon, and I am going to wrap it around that front flap. And then I'm going to tie a bow over here on the left-hand side. And if we need to trim that later, we can do that. And then I'm going to stamp on this circle. I'm going to bring in our memento black ink. 
and I'm going to bring in from the Season of Chic stamp set. I'm going to be using Love You because I think Love You could go for someone that you love, right? And if you're having family over for Thanksgiving or Christmas, you definitely love them. Okay, and I'm going to put that about right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and pop this. Um, actually, I don't think I'm going to pop up the circle. You could. So I'm going to adhere this. I do not, I cannot add glue all uh all over the circle because if I do I won't be able to get the box open so I am going to uh, place it like I want and then I'm going to use, uh, leave about a fourth of it without any adhesive so I'm just going to kind of hold that and I put adhesive three-fourths of the top so just a little bit more Oh, half or just a little bit more than half is fine. And then I'm going to place this. And I want to make sure there's no glue showing when there isn't. That is good. Now you could pop this up. You most certainly could. But I've chosen not to. So I'm going to hold that down a little bit for it to adhere. And I'm bringing in some... Dimensionals because we want to pop up our snowflakes. I'm going to put the lid on my, my ink. Okay, and I'm going to place one down here, making sure I don't get that dimensional. I don't want it to stick to my box, right? Okay, I think one is probably fine. And then we're going to go ahead and just kind of situate it right here. And pop up our last. And I can tuck that right under here. I'm going to bring in these little uh, Velcro circles. I think I maybe got them at Hobby Lobby. Um, I want to apologize for the heater that you can hear. I forgot. I usually turn the heater off and I forgot, but I know it does. It is rather loud, and I apologize for that. So I am going to go ahead Put that on top there, and then we're going to peel this off. Looks like I need to. Been wanting to use these, so I thought this would be a perfect time to do that. That way, it'll keep that flap down. And I'm going to put it about right here. So we'll press that right here. And let me go ahead and give this a little haircut. And well, that's kind of takes a little bit of time to kind of seal that. Let's bring in some um, some embellishments. And Just add one right there. And these are from the Very Cute uh, Suite. I don't remember the, the names of these this adhesive, but I will tell you in just a second. 
These are the adhesive back glitter sequins. Okay. So let me get my mess out of the way. And here is our project. So, and you can just open up the Velcro. If it's a, a regular size, full size Kit Kat. But again, you could add some money or anything else or even like a little message. And I think these would look be really nice favors um, sitting on your plate or by your um, on your at your table for a little favor or you could tuck it in a stocking or even have it under the tree so a uh, lots of uh, lots of reasons um, I have grandchildren that live out of state so I love to send when I send uh, packages and things uh, I love to send homemade um, items and this is one that I will send to them so again, thank you for watching. I'm Terry Hartley at Rustic Barn Cards. I will see you next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Bye for now. Have a great week.